All right, let's talk about the Nord Stream pipeline because Seymour Hirsch, a veteran journalist, uh, one of the greatest living uh, investigative journalists uh, of all time, um, who's recently been vilified for his unbelievable coverage of the Nord Stream pipeline, is back with a new bombshell update on the Nord Stream pipeline on his Substack, and I encourage everyone to read it. And it is maybe an indication that Democrats are willing to start listening to this and maybe, just maybe, willing to turn on President Biden for his role um, in what would be international sabotage. There are some signs that this may be the case uh, because the evidence that the Biden administration actually committed this act of what would be an act of terrorism is growing. This week, investigative journalist Seymour Hirsch published a follow-up to his bombshell piece, which accused the U.S. of sabotaging the Nord Stream pipeline. Here's the piece for your reference. Um, and it answers the question, why Norway? What's Norway got to do with this? Uh, so is this something that Congress will ignore or is this something that is actionable in a way that will serve to maybe implicate the president in a way that this classified document scandal really does not seem to? Uh, well, if for, well, what? Well, I was going to say, yeah, because they were hoping to get him out of office using the classified document scandal. But that really, you know, that's, that's been shot down by a lot of people saying, look, now Mike Pence. You know, like all these people have these classified documents. Like That's a deflated balloon. Yeah, it's a deflated balloon. That's not enough now. Now, maybe Democrats could hang their hat on, hey, we need to get this guy out of office. Like, this guy is a disaster. And Democrats are going down with, a, he's got like a 30% approval rating or whatever. This could be the thing that finally sinks them, maybe through an impeachment proceeding on this, an act of international terrorism. Right. Uh, here is former Democratic Congress, congressman and presidential candidate Pre Dennis Kucinich. Um, he is talking about how, you know, Democrats should be falling in line with outrage around this. And here is his narrative that he lay, lays out about how we see you, this is wrong, and you need to be held accountable for it. Listen. In blowing up the Nord Stream pipeline, this government has deliberately circumvented Article 1 of the U.S. Constitution, the authority of Congress to make war. It has violated international criminal law by conspiring to commit acts of sabotage and violence on the high seas. It has used illegal and unconstitutional means to destroy the energy resources needed to protect millions of people in Europe during the winter and then to profit from its illegal actions by selling energy to Europe at a four to six times markup. It has done so. It has done so blatantly, cynically, simultaneously taking credit for the destruction of the Nord Stream pipeline and then denying any role in it. I speak directly to those responsible. Thanks to a courageous journalist, Seymour Hirsch. Thanks to a courageous journalist, Seymour Hirsch. We know, we know what each of you did at the Nord Stream Pipeline, Mr. President, Mr. Secretary of State, Mr. National Security Advisor, and Madam Under Secretary of State, and we will not rest until you are held accountable by Congress, by the International Criminal Court, and by the American people at the next election. Right. It'd be nice if he ran for president again. Yeah, oh, you know, man. I was thinking he looks pretty good. He he looks, yeah. you know, I mean, especially Does compared to the president prime? we've got right now, he That's looks based, <laughs> he looks adolescent <laughs> compared right. to what we've got. Oh my God! Yeah, um, and I like the natural gray. You know, it. I feel like. Because I think his hair used to be brown when he was running before. And, yeah. You know, I don't know. Like when I he's well when I was with the Ron Paul campaign, we always hoped that Ron would pick him as his vice president. Mm. That would have been a a great ticket. Yeah. And and he's a gracious yeah. guy. Not I've typical. interviewed uh, Congressman yeah. Kucinich many many times, and he's a very very kind. Um, but he is vehemently anti-war and thinks the overreach is is unbelievable. And so, you know, it's sad that any members of Congress right now 
I, I hope they're paying attention because the constituents are starting to call. And one thing all of us can do right now, every one of you watching, we've got like 50,000 of you watching, 20 on, or so on Rumble and, and Twitter and, and YouTube. Just send a message to your elected representative and demand action on this. That's something, if you get 50, 60,000 people phoning and calling into your members of the members of Congress demanding a hearing, pushing towards an investigation on this, pushing towards impeachment proceedings. We can all make a difference by doing something about this. Yes, and we are going to arm you with more knowledge about it by way of Seymour Hirsch. So what he alleged a few weeks ago was that the U.S. Navy worked in conjunction with Norway to sabotage the Nord Stream pipeline that was set to deliver affordable energy to uh, Europe from Russia. The motivation was to sabotage Russia and keep Germany from relying on Russia. Now, why the Navy? Here was his answer from his first article, uh, because the Navy allowed this operation to remain covert um, because the divers were Navy only and not members of America's Special Operations Command, whose covert operations must be reported to Congress. So the Navy allowed the Biden administration to keep this secret, avoid hmm. leaks. Why Norway? He answered that as well a couple weeks ago. Um, Norway, th just in Washington, they thought they hated the Russians. And the Norwegian Navy was full of superb sailors and divers who had generations of experience in highly profitable deep sea oil and gas exploration. He says, well, this week he explores this why Norway even further by saying that the Norwegian Navy has a long and murky history of cooperation with American intelligence and that this begun over six decades ago and eventually led us into a war with Vietnam. Here is how he talks about how after the Second World War, ever prudent Norway invested heavily in the construction of large, heavily armed, fast attack boats to defend its 1400 miles of Atlantic Ocean coastline. The vessels were far more effective than the famed American PT boats that was ennobled in many a post-war movie. The boats were known as nasty class. That's probably better translated into Norwegian because in English that doesn't sound, that sounds dirty. What was like, it? Na nasty, nasty class. Nasty class. Nasty class, yeah. Is the name of these boats uh, for their powerful gunnery. And some were sold to the Navy, according to reporting in Norway by early 1964. At least two Norwegian sailors confessed to their involvement in CIA led clandestine attacks along the North Vietnam coast. Other reports never confirmed said that Norwegian patrol boats were manned by Norwegian officers and crew. What was not in dispute was that the American goal was to put pressure on the leadership in North Vietnam to lessen its support of the anti-American guerrillas in South Vietnam. And the strategy did not work. He says that this, that the engage, the U S then engaged Vietnamese warships and falsely claimed that they were fired upon, which led President Johnson at the time to address the nation and declare war powers. So that led us into war. Um, but now he says he has learned, I'm gonna pick up just this little bit here and show you. He says, it was not two, it was actually six. The first batch of Norwegian patrol boats meant for the CIA's undeclared war against the North Vietnamese actually numbered six. They landed in early 1964 at a Vietnamese naval base in Da Nang, uh, 85 miles south of the border between North and South Vietnam. The ships had Norwegian crews and Norwegian Navy officers as their captains. They declared mission was to teach American and Vietnamese sailors to operate the ships. The vessels were under the control of the long running CIA directed series of attacks against the coastal targets inside North Vietnam. The secret operation was controlled by the Joint Chiefs of Staff in Washington and not by the American Command in Saigon, which was then headed by Army General William Westmoreland. That shift was deemed essential because there was another aspect of the undeclared war against the North that was sacrosanct. The U.S. Navy SEALs were assigned to the mission with a high priority list of far more aggressive targets that included heavily defended North Vietnamese radar facilities. So we are asked here to be to remember the Vietnam War, which now Clay and I debated this today. I pretty much nobody thinks that that was a good idea. Yeah, there was a time when you could argue against it and you would be vilified a la Jane Fonda, Jane Fonda right? <laughs> um, and but there were, of course, now I can't find. Can you name anyone that's like, yeah, you know, the Vietnam War was a good idea. 
I'm glad like, we did that. I'm glad 58,000 Americans died and millions of others were killed. I'm like, that sounds like a good idea. Yes, mostly innocent Vietnamese civilians were killed right. in the millions. Uh, and so if Norway was complicit in being led towards a false flag using their boats, using their servicemen uh, to plant this false flag as a seed for war, and now something similar is happening, right? So if anyone knows their, their motive, though, like why? Why go along with the U.S. other than anti-Russian sentiment? Well, and money, because now you can literally, and they've increased the doubled or almost tripled now the amount of gas exports to Europe. So you, Norway is making bank on all of this. So okay. that's, of course, that's money. another yeah. motive. Money, yeah. yeah, money at the yeah, heart Yeah, you're going to... Exactly. It would have to be money. I mean, Mac, I don't know if you saw the fog of war. It was McNamara like, oh, yeah. before he died. He, he came out and he said the Gulf of Tonkin was a false flag operation. It was. And so knowing that, you would think that another country getting involved would have had been privy to that information at some level. Um, and now they're, they're, you know, they have whatever they went there to accomplish had to be financial because there was a reason that we pushed so hard to do it that we were willing to do a false flag and take that chance. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Robert, we, I mentioned this to Natalie earlier today. I was talking about Robert McNamara. Like, you know, these people at the end of their life, they realize, like, oh, I have nothing to live for. I'm, I'm going to tell this truth now, you know, towards the end of my life here <laughs> because they want to sort of unburden themselves. I don't know, but admitting the Gulf of Tonkin was a false flag. And so there is nothing There is nothing good about what, uh, what happened in Vietnam. There's no... Uh, but there are absolutely parallels to the war we are being led into right now right. as like an unprovoked war, as Vladimir Putin as the only bad guy. As And so if that war had a similar origin story with Norway as a partner in crime, it would be naive to not ask, is this the sequel? Uh, and here's how he puts this. This bit of top secret and heretofore unknown history raises to this reporter an obvious question. What else do we not know about the secret operation in Norway that led to the destruction of the pipeline? Is there anyone in the Senate and the House or the American press interested in finding out what was going on and what else we do not know? Is this a handholding into war that is in the interest of nobody. Hmm. Well, I no, really because hope he, it, oh, yeah, go ahead, Philip. Oh, sorry. Oh, I was just gonna say, I, I didn't realize you were answering the question. <laughs> I, I thought you were treated as I rhetorical. I think he was just uh, thinking on it. I really hope, yeah. yeah, I really hope that he continues this investigation and it doesn't just stop here because I, I would be uh, like shocked if we don't eventually find out that Germany was complicit in it also. And they just oh. got to pretend like they didn't know well, and that's really, and I've touched on it loosely here on the show. I've mentioned it a few times. This is uh, uh, George Eliasson's reporting on this. Um, and as he has, he's mentioned here, he mentioned in passing, I think we did a little bit on the show with George, and I'd like to maybe do a deeper dive with George on this. Uh, excellent reporter, George Eliasson, who's talked specifically about the environmental movement, the green, the green, uh, the greens in in Germany, who uh, basically eco terrorists who were involved, uh, according to his reporting, that they were involved um, in pushing the pushing that country in that way. And so, how much involvement they had with the actual planning and execution, or was it that they were able to push the German government? Or I don't know exactly how they were involved with the U.S. Navy and Norway in this. And that would be fascinating to find out, and hopefully, see more Hirsch's reporting bring some of this together from George's reporting as well. And we can get to the, to the heart of all of this. Huh? I you hadn't know. even considered that until Philip well, just said it. Why are they quiet? It. Why is Germany quiet? Literally, if the United States had a pipeline in the Gulf of Mexico that was blown up by Russia, we'd be like, Oh, that was too bad. Right. I mean, and we found out that Russia worked with Canada to do it. Would, I mean, would we just sit here and say nothing about it? It's unbelievable silence. You know, now well, there are members of the, like there are members of parliament. There are members of the German government who are speaking out about it. But the Olaf Scholz is not the chancellor. I mean, quiet peep crickets. Go ahead, David. Well, and does it take a genius to be like, hey, uh, the Nord Stream pipeline just blew up. Um, we just happen to have some gas over here. We can ship you for a higher price. Like, right. That's yeah. just, you know what I mean? A coincidence? Like, there's no way that that just happens. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, we will link to the story in the show notes and we very much appreciate you and your thoughts on why, what this means. Also, if, um, nasty class is a better word in Norwegian because it just sounds stupid in English. So <laughs> nasty class. Let us know. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.